Luca's historic center is a labyrinth of narrow cobbled streets, bustling piazzas and historic buildings, with a rich cultural heritage that gave birth to the world-renowned opera composer Giacomo Puccini. This man had six first names. Six first names. This enchanting city, nestled in the heart of Tuscany, offers a beautiful blend of art, music, history and of course, food. That hit different. With its most iconic feature being its well-preserved Renaissance era city walls. In our previous Tuscan episode, we headed to the hills above Lucca to take part in a special annual event, La Vendemia, the harvesting of wine grapes. <laughs> this worked better in the Greek paintings. Today's adventure takes us through Lucca's historic center as we visit a local cafe to sample a classic Lucchese sweet cake. What a strange combo. The house and museum of the legendary Puccini family and the city's majestic cathedral before ending the day off with a typical Tuscan street food. Oh, that crunch. And possibly some of the best gelato flavors we've tried in Italy. I think I just found my new favorite flavor. We're Matteo and Misha. We are currently traveling to all 20 regions of Italy on the ultimate Italian road trip. This thing's spicy as hell. Subscribe to follow the adventure. It's an early 11.37. <laughs> Up until about 10 minutes ago, the piazza has been very quiet. We had this thing where we would start filming at like 9 a.m. in most cities, but we'd get out and there'd be no vibe and it'd just be the delivery trucks and restaurants setting up. But then we also devised the Global Expats filming rules. And one of the rules is to not leave the house really early because every time we do, we walk outside and Italy is just like, oh. It's very, it's early. very peaceful. If you want to take a walk, it's great. But when we want to film and get a vibe, it's very quiet. So at 11 30, 11, 11 30, that's when we kickstart the day. And the piazza literally just, just came alive, like not even 10 minutes ago. So we're ready to go. I'm ready. I'm going to be a bit rusty. It's been actually nine months since I was last on an Italy video. But who, who, who cares? I'll get picked up where I left off. It says no time has passed. We are ready for this. If I sound nervous, I'm not nervous. Just excited. Wow. Time to go locking up. Ready to hit them streets. I'm on our ancient staircase. I seriously can't get over how this looks. Oh, that's a lot of turns. That is a lot of turns. Why did you mean? Triple lock system here in our time. <laughs> This is not very mobility friendly, but these buildings are very old. I mean, this just looks like the prison cell at the top of Palazzo Vecchio where they held the Medici. Or the humpback of Notre Dame. Or the humpback of Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah, I like that one better. All right. No more on this crawl. People park their little bikes inside. You gotta press your button. Oh, dude, that was an aggressive pull, Mish. Even Jimmy. We're outside. Ready for the day. Oh, it's a beautiful day out. Right now, even though it's noon and we've already had a cup of coffee at home, we are going to get a coffee and a bucciolato. Is that how you say it? Bucciolato. Bucciolato at a place called Bucciolato. It's a famous uh, Tuscan breakfast. It's like a raisin bread, a sweet bread. Lucchese. Lucchese, sorry. Oh what I also found out is it's also a Sicilian thing, but they change the ingredients to make a Luca one. Everything's just Sneaky. all intertwined. <gasps> Whoa. Oh my goodness. Is this the back of the Duomo? San Michele in Foro. So not the Duomo, One just the another church. beautiful church. <laughs> it's been a while since we've seen a church. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Oh. So I'm pretty sure that's what it looks like. Yeah, it is. 
Wow, everything in this window looks fantastic. Ciao! Buongiorno! So we just get a loaf? È possibile provare un pezzo di bugolato? This is what the whole loaf looks like, and we just got three pieces of that loaf. You could take a whole one if you want, though. Everything in this window looks so good. Uh, number four, yes. Number four. Yes, over there. Oh. Grazie. Grazie mille. Ooh, how cute. Little baby slices. <laughs> Got a little espresso here. I'm excited. So from my research, I gathered that the bucelato is also a Sicilian round cake. However, this one's called Bucalato di Luca, and it can come now in a loaf because it's easier to transport. It is a fragrant bread, sweet bread, made with raisins and anise seed. And anise. Anise. <laughs> Michelle knows these words better than me being her little Arab self. But yeah, we're going to try it today. You have it either with coffee or tea. We also have it as a dessert with anise seed. And anise. With anise seed liqueur. So we're gonna try it. Yeah. And they say you can also, like if you got a cappuccino or some nice milky coffee, you can also dip it into that, but we just got an espresso today. And anise is big in Lebanese culture as well. Uh, it makes the bread sweet, so it is an important ingredient, you could say, for our uh, Middle Eastern food. So I'm actually really excited to try it because anise just makes me very nostalgic for like my mom's cooking. Well, I'm really excited about this one. Let's give it a try. Good boy. How's it? It's sweet, but raisiny. I've got a very hard crust, but chewy, but sweet. What a strange combo. I think you're supposed to dip it in the coffee. Maybe that would be a bit weird to dip in the espresso, but who's judging? Let's give it a try. I got the end. That's the end. I think they mean dip it in a normal car. <laughs> non espresso. You're not getting espresso with this thing. All right, we're gonna try this again. Seeing Mateo's reaction, I feel like maybe we didn't get the full experience. So now I ordered, I had my espresso, but I ordered a cappuccino for us just so we could dip it. Maybe it makes it softer, and, and uh, you know, that's maybe how we were supposed to do it in Italy. So here we go. You throw in that. Sugar. I'm going to be buzzing. I think this maybe was the way we were supposed to do it the first time. Oh, we're about to be judged very heavily. Whatever, we're about to find out. Mm. No, that's amazing. I definitely think Mateo's gonna like this better. It softens it. It's got a nice level of sweetness. It's not too sweet for breakfast. It is hard when you pick it up, so go for the cappuccino dunk. I'm gonna see if Mateo likes it better this way. Here, it's your turn. You dunk it and see if it changes your mind. Are you ready? This is good. Oh, look at that. Dripped out. That's way better. <laughs> See? Way better. What a weird concoction of flavors. It's like a hot cross bun with an extra ingredient. For a lot of our Americans out there, a hot cross bun is a typical thing in, I'm guessing, the UK, which kind of is part of us in South Africa. I don't know about Australia and New Zealand, but it's popular around Easter time because it's got the cross on the bun. Represents the cross of Jesus, I think. Don't quote sure me on that. <laughs> He's right. That's where I was like, there's also another similarity. A hot cross bun, uh, I would say, is the closest thing that you could associate that with. Hot cross bun also has raisins. I like the one without raisins and with the ice cream. I'm not the biggest fan of raisins. Like, I've, I've grown to be okay with them. I'll, I will eat them, like, in breakfast or in the hot cross buns. I don't love them. I probably still would go. My go-to breakfast is the cornetto con crema, which is the croissant with the cream in it. But this is good. I'm happy we tried it. The bun with icing and no raisins is called a Chelsea bun. <laughs> and it's not a hot cross bun. Or a cinnamon roll. For cultural reference. <laughs> it's an excessive amount of coffee, seeing as we've each already had a coffee at home this morning. <laughs> 9.50. So the two espressos, the cappuccino, and those three little slices came out to 9.50, .50, but I think that also includes the table service maybe? No, I don't know, it's the wrong receipt. Oh, I don't know. But that was a nice little breakfast, aka lunch, snack, 
12.30 right now. But since we're here at San Frediano or San Michele, which one is this? <laughs> which, what church San is San Michele in Foro. San Michele in Foro. We're going to see this next. Are you all jacked up on caffeine? You ready to see some I things? am. I feel like it's, it's like going, you know, in that U-curve where things are getting so unstable and it's starting to come down a little bit. <laughs> I just have to down some water. I'm all jacked up on Mountain Dew. Yeah. San Michele in Foro has been documented since the year 795. However, it was officially commissioned in 1070 by Pope Alexander II. The church is over a thousand years old and dates back to the Roman times. Its facade looks similar to the cathedral in Pisa as it takes the same Romanesque style. It's got an immense height and a wealth of sculptures. At the top, there is a large marble statue depicting the archangel, Michael, defeating the dragon. They actually say that there's an emerald somewhere within the statue because on really bright days, there's a green sparkle coming from it. But a stone has never been found. The church also houses three important works of art. An enameled terracotta of the Madonna and Child by Luca della Robbia, Palla Magrini by Filippo Lippi, and a high relief of the Virgin sculptured by Raffaello di Montelupo. I am beginning to understand my different art periods. You can tell this church was built during the Romanesque era and before the Gothic age because of how dark it is and the windows are really small because they hadn't discovered how to hold up the ceiling without building really thick walls which left space for windows that are about this big. Other than that, it's pretty dark. Yeah, it was very it's dark. There wasn't any paintings like in a lot of churches in Italy, the, the ceilings, the walls would be like covered in beautiful like frescoes and or mosaics. This one was pretty much completely bare. Um, yeah, very dark, very little mm. windows, but... They're always pretty. But yeah, I mean, it still feels very yeah. peaceful in there. It's it's still beautiful in its own way, uh, just not as, I would say, lavish as yeah. the interior of a lot of other churches. It's actually getting very hard for us to <laughs> judge churches or cathedrals, because I think we may be on like the 200th of our journey so far, <laughs> and you kind of take things a little bit for granted because we see them so often but yeah yeah but it's always this... beautiful to go in one like i still love i still love when we see a, a new one that we haven't seen um and just actually realizing the differences i think has become pretty yeah. cool because like you said the more you see the more you're realizing oh i can definitely tell it's from this era or that era mm. um yeah beautiful the outside of the church is also very cool mm. got a cool vibe to it so and there's a free entrance i love how there's a railing to hold on to but there's no guard on the other side of that staircase We found a shady street. <laughs> Feels so good. It's only 26 degrees. What is that in Fahrenheit? I'm still so bad at doing the conversion. 80? Yeah. 85? There's no practical conversion because America <laughs> complicates everything. <laughs> it's not wrong. Palazzo Fana is the oldest brewery in Luta, although it's not a brewery anymore. We're going to be going to the Puccini Museum shortly, but I think we're going to go to see the Duomo now first. Maybe? No, we're not. Mateo's shaking his head no, <laughs> so I take that back. <laughs> we're on the other side of the city. This is Puccini Museum. This is Puccini. There we go. So this is it. Let's see how much it is. From 10 to 5.30. So the hours change. Depending what season you're here, the hours for museums and, and churches and everything will change. Is it open? Maybe this isn't the entrance. So even though we're at the physical location, we have to go to Piazza Cittadella in front of, in front of his statue. We're gonna find the ticket office. Then you can come back here and ring the bell. We think this is the ticket office they said is next to his statue, which we think that that's it right there. Is this his statue? Yeah, this is his statue. So the ticket office is to the left. Of the statue. That's what it said, okay. So the directions are to the left of the statue. This is a very cute little piazza though. So this is Piazza Cittadella and sometimes there's actually free Puccini uh, singers here that come and like sing from his operas. There'll be free performances here. So hopefully we'll catch one of those during our time here. But <laughs> the hunt for the ticket office continues. That's a salon. I think this is a theater. Maybe that's why the ticket office is here? And that's closed. Okay, so that's a little confusing. This seems like a little cinema complex. Uh, still haven't found the ticket office. I feel like we're on a scavenger <laughs> hunt. <laughs> that's true. Well, maybe you should ask somebody. Ah, there we go. <laughs> All right. So when you see the statue, you just <laughs> go this way. 
They've got a lot of merch for sale too. I remember I used to have one of these pencils as a kid. Looks like a music note. That's so pretty. Okay, so tickets are nine bucks. Ready to go? Ready to see some, some history? I feel the need to. <clears throat> I just want to stress that I freaked out last night when I was trying to look up Puccini's like full name because I was like, okay, what's his first name? Because we just know him as Puccini. And then I, I like just looked quickly and I was like, Matteo. This man had six first names. Six first names. I even had to make a what's it? What's that thing when you try and make like the letters into a word? Anagram. Anagram. Let me see if I can do this off the top of my head without looking again. Giacomo Antonio Domenico Secondo Maria Puccini. I'm gonna I think have to you fact. Got that is that right? I think you Giac Giac Giacomo Antonio Domenico Secondo Maria Puccini. No, you're no. forgetting something. No, no, no. Michele, 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 and that's my name. I forgot the Michele. Okay, where does the Michele go? Giacomo Antonio Domenico. Michele Secondo Maria. Maria Puccini. There we go. I forgot the Michele because it was G A D Gad M S M Puccini. That was my little way of remembering it. Tail was making fun of me because I was just so mind blown that he had six first names, and I was like, that's insane. He is known as the most famous Italian opera composer after Verdi, and he came from a long line of, he's actually a descendant of a long line and lineage of composers dating back to the Baroque era. I know, I'm pretty impressed Check that I remembered all of that off the top of my head. He I had a formal education, formal musical education, and composed his first opera by the age of 25, which, not gonna lie, makes me feel a little bit behind in life. Anyway, now we got tickets, <laughs> we're gonna we're go at, into- We had his house museum to get in. Once you got your ticket, is to ring a doorbell. So then you ring it. Oh, it beeps, and I think they open the door. Do we pull? Not yet. How about now? It's not working. Ugh. Am I gonna set an alarm off? See, 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 old. Ah, it clicked. There we go. We heard the click. Yeah. Okay, we got this. You asked about tickets. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's very cool in here. That's nice. Are you ready for your, your musical uh, adventure? So how many composers have we been across in Italy so far? We've got Verdi, we've got Puccini. Who was the one in Catania? Catania was he, the one of Norma. What's his name? Um, Pasta alla Norma because of his Norma. <laughs> what was his name? Oh my goodness. Oh, Bartolini. No. Bartolini. No, no, that's not it. That's from Letters to Juliet. Um, it's something with a B. Oh my goodness. How are we forgetting this? I literally filmed his, his thing on the ground in the church. Oh, come on. Who was the famous composer from Catania? Vincenzo Bellini. Bellini! Oh, my word. halfway there. I said Bartoloni, but I think that's from Letters to Juliet. Yeah. When she's looking for him. That's oh, yeah. Yeah, this is, we just keep going here. Okay, we made it. Did you get it right? What, did I get it right? Giacomo <coughs> Antonio Domenico Michieles. I definitely got it right. I got it right. See, Gad MSM. So this is his family tree. So we've got some composition books here. Um, these look very old. This was the opera that he, it was his first opera that he composed and this was when he was 25. It was this one. And that's one of his most famous ones. I'm obsessed with this guy. The man has six first names. I love that they're playing his music in here. It's really adding to the vibe. It's giving a nice, nice atmospherics. Nessun Dorma, his most famous composition, was composed on this piano. Oh, is that right? Hmm. This piano bench is like a dent in it. <laughs> Looks well used. Literally divots down. This is a full-length portrait of him, the man with six names. You still can't get over it. The artist signed to my dear friend Puccini, 1902. They found his journal saying the day that he actually even got this. He arrived in Florence and the guy started at like 6.30 p.m. There's a whole like information on over there. It's pretty cool that you can like backtrack that far. Let's continue. 
Legend has it that every time he walked down these stairs, he hit his head on this low roof. And every time he hit it, a new verse came into his head. Did you just make that up? <laughs> I almost believe you. This is just, what, where, do I, where does my foot go? Okay. This is worse than the Duomo in Florence. That's, that's less than half a foot. Oh my god. Just like this. <laughs> this is crazy. As one of his plays. This reminds me of Rota Manjapani. Oh, it and does. And Little Houses. Same era, I think. Oh. That's a weird way to hold a pencil. This looks like Scrooge's Christmas outfit. We don't want to climb these stairs after a few. <laughs> don't smack your head. You might come up with a new opera. <laughs> Very carefully down the stairs. The dressing room we've been watching Downton. Oh yes. This is where you got dressed by somebody else. That is a giant fan. Mm. This <gasps> is cool. I love stuff like this. I think that's a Tempur Pedic. <laughs> so this is his room. <gasps> These are so cool. What is all medallions. This opera music's really making me feel very sophisticated. That one looks like Adrian Brody playing Dolly in Midnight in Paris. He died from smoking too much. How do you say that? La la Laryngeal cancer. That one. Uh, yo, he used to smoke over 60 a day. He was 29th of November 1924. He was born in 58, died in 24. I'm not a human calculator. He was 66 when he died. He actually died in Brussels. He went to go do some radiotherapy. I wonder if that is something to do with Oh, like. maybe cancer, maybe yeah. like the first radiation. But it says his heart couldn't take it. That's really sad, I didn't know that part. So these costumes that are out on display are actually from the operas, from when they were performed. And they are, look like they're still in very good condition and they're stunning. They might be replicas. We're not too sure. Yeah, maybe replicas. Yeah. And this is his funeral in the news. The Puccini house was donated to the Puccini Museum in 1974 and it was actually opened as a museum officially in 1979. Between 2004 and 2011, a huge restoration took place to turn the house into its original state as it was when Giacomo Puccini was a child. Sadly, he was the last composer in his family and so the bloodline of musicians ended there. And my jacket came off because it is boiling now. It is roughly 2, 2.30. 10 past 2. It's 10 past 2, 2.10 as we say in America. Alrighty, where are we going? Piazza Napoleone. Napoleon's Piazza. The leaves are starting to change colors. The thing with Italy is that it's just almost a bit too relaxing, especially when you're busy doing stuff. You kind of got to decide when to take natural breaks. You need like a little bit of an energy kick. Don't know what I'm going to get, but we should get something. Right? Well, such a lovely vibe here. So I have no idea what event's happening here, but Piazza Napoleone is not very functional right now. But I think there's a statue in the middle, so we're going to get a shot of that quick. <laughs> we wanted to get the statue, but we're on the wrong side now. Of course, you get your statue of Garibaldi, pretty standard. If you've literally watched any one of our videos, you'll come across a common theme in every single one. Every city has something dedicated to Giuseppe Garibaldi, whether it's a piazza, a statue, a street name, a building, literally everything. Just to catch you up, he was vital in the unification of Italy in the 1860s. So you'll find a statue of him pretty much everywhere. So honestly, coming back this time to Italy, we decided that we're gonna take a different approach to what we do. Instead of just trying to do absolutely everything, which is, is quite tiring if you visited Italy for a long period of time, we're gonna start picking the things that we kind of want to do more than others, such as like art museums and that. We visited a lot of them and sometimes after a while, 
We're not the biggest art enthusiasts, so it's a bit hard to visit lots of the museums. So our approach going forward is to visit the more unique things in the city, stuff that you won't find in the other cities, such as the Puccini House and Museum. But for now, there is a massive palace next to us, Palazzo Ducale, and it has an art exhibition as well as a sensory exhibition. So we're gonna go see how much that is and decide whether we wanna go inside or not. Piazza Napoleone, from what I understand, Louis, Maria Luisa of Bourbon, as well as Napoleon's sister, helped in the restructuring efforts of this area. And so there is a sculpture of Maria Luisa here in the center. However, there's a lot of, I wouldn't call this construction, scaffolding being built right now. There must be an event coming up, so we're not too able to see the piazza. All right, this makes sense. I think it's Planet Earth Festival. Oh, so it starts today, to the 8th. Unless it's inside. Oh, maybe. I think that's inside. Wow, this is huge. Wow. What are we doing? This is a historic residence in the center of Luca. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Built in the early 14th century, Palazzo Ducale is now the seat of the provincial administration and the prefettura, which I'm pretty sure is a branch of the government. In addition to its offices, there are also museums and exhibitions set up here in the building. There is a Risorgimento Museum, one about the unification of Italy, as well as a sensory exhibition. On, it's called Nose and History. So I'm pretty sure you get to smell perfumes of past queens. But we'll take a look around and see what we can find. If there's something small or cool we'll see, we'll go inside and take a look. I think this is the Planet Earth Festival that starts today. Oh, it looks so green. That's a very beautiful backdrop. Seems like there's gonna be a lot of speakers and stuff. I like how like breath mints or throat lozenges are like half a sponsor of this. This courtyard and palace are actually pretty cool. I think there's two courtyards in this area. I wonder where the other one is. It's either that side or that side. But we're just exploring it a little to see what we can find. Luca is known as the city of 100 churches. As to the amount of religious sites that there are in the city. I do not want to be visiting all 100. That must be exhausting. But here's another one behind us. You kind of come around them every other corner. Not gonna lie though, it's a little confusing that Luca's called the city of 100 churches because Iriche, when in Sicily, when we went, is also known as a city of 100 churches. I think Iriche was metaphorical. And maybe. It had a lot of churches. And maybe, but. Personally, I feel like every city in Italy is a city of 100 churches because you will find them everywhere in every city. But they are stunning and you do have a lot to see. currently reading the autobiography of Giuseppe Garibaldi. I like reading autobiographies. He's actually pretty fascinating, his history. He like made his name in South America, came back, went into retirement in Italy, had to get called back to try and help retake the country. Fascinating, fascinating dude. He actually died on an island like off the coast of Sardinia. And you can go visit his like little humble home and that. By the sounds of it, he kind of lived in isolation with his wife. And that's just kind of how he ended his life. No historic no epic ending no epic ending just a subtle retirement to his home hey look another church this one is called chiesa di santi giovanni e reparata which i thought was the duomo but actually behind this church is the duomo <laughs> behind that another church behind that another church and behind that another gelato church. oh yeah <laughs> okay. behind me is duomo di san martino the Cathedral of Luca. Funny enough, in most cities, the Piazza del Duomo is the main piazza in the city. However, when you come through here, you can clearly tell it's pretty quiet. And I know it is like a roundabout siesta time where the shops and that close midday, but by the looks of it, the Piazza Anfiteatro, where we're staying, is the bustling piazza. This one is just really, really quiet, peaceful, and beautiful to just come and sit and enjoy the Luca Air, I guess. The cathedral was completely rebuilt between 1060 and 1070. Its Romanesque facade is also similar to the one in Pisa. The cathedral is also famous for holding the holy face 
and the statue of Ilaria del Carreto. So the holy face, the Volto Santo, is famous because it is claimed to have been carved by Nicodemus. We are now going to go see what the inside of the Duomo looks like. I don't know about its tower, I actually didn't come across much research on it. But it looks like you can climb it. But from what I understand, there's only two towers left in the city. So this kind of contradicts that because the other two aren't this one. I'll clarify that in a minute. So they said this tower is about 200 steps or so. So it's about half of the Giotto Bell Tower in Florence, which is 414 steps. All right, so my story is once again, even more contradicted. As if you turn with me this way, there's another tower. <laughs> so I feel like I read the wrong fact somewhere. <laughs> This looks like a very old bank. Bank of the Mountain of Luca. After further research, I have found out that these two do in fact not count as towers, as they are the bell towers of the churches. So the other two towers are freestanding towers. These ones are connected to the church. That's the bell tower, the church that we just passed before the Duomo. And this is obviously the Campanile of the Duomo, the bell tower. Okay, opening hours and prices. Today's Thursday, so it's open until six. Three euro, or you can get a combined uh, cathedral, ticket. Cathedral, bell tower, museum, uh, it's in English, and church of the one next door. Okay. We're gonna get the combined ticket for the Duomo and the other church and the other stuff, but we don't have enough water to climb the bell tower right now, and we're actually very thirsty. So we're just taking a quick stop to the mini market down the road, six minute walk, gonna grab some waters, and then we'll come back and climb our tower. We have access to both towers, the church next to it and the Duomo, but I think we're just gonna do the one. Seem to have come across a little book market. Does that say Indiana? Indiana. Tips. Tips. Oh, no. All the Disney classics. If you wanna improve your Italian, the best oh, way to do it is, is to so get children's cool. books in Italian. <laughs> one euro for a, for a comic. This is the most stacked little book market I've ever yeah, come across. Oh, that's crazy. There's so much here. Ooh, cats! <laughs> that place is called Willy. Willy. <laughs> hey, look! A tower. Connected to a church. <laughs> we seem to have done a full 360, but we're currently on our way to our Pam Local. It's not that it's local, it's literally called Pam Local. To buy some water. We found it. <laughs> Tucked away. I need water. My goodness, this is a stacked grocery store. <laughs> this is huge. Okay, so as I showed you guys in my grocery shopping video, you'll see a bunch of six packs here, but you can literally just take one out and just buy the one of these big 150ml uh, bottles. See? Like someone's taken, there's only two left of this one, so you're welcome to do that or just take the whole six pack. All right, let's go climb this thing. All right, so after some reconsideration of what our plan is, we went and fetched our water and we came back prepared to climb the tower. However, both of us are pretty hungry and we kind of want to try this little restaurant that's around the corner. We're also climbing the other two highest towers in the city tomorrow. So I think we're just going to give the Duomo Tower a skip because it does include this other church and its tower. So the combined ticket, we wouldn't really use all of it, but let us know in the comments below which tower you would recommend climbing if you're coming to Luca. If you've climbed all of them, the Duomo one, this other church one, the Torre delle Ore, or the Guinigi Tower, let us know which is the one you would climb. But for now, we're just going to go see the inside of the Duomo. It's actually rather large.
again, based on its little windows, it is Romanesque architecture. All right, so your other common theme you'll come across in Italy is my whole spiel I gave about the Vinto Santo, the holy face. It came inside and it is actually currently being restored. So I don't think we're able to see it. It looks like that you have like a whole laboratory open with a curtain to show you how they're restoring it. But for now, we can see the sacristy of the Ilaria del Careto. The other famous thing in this cathedral. The tomb is of the Lord of Luca's wife. It's famous because it's one of the best sculpted like funerary tombs in Italy. Only in Italy would you have a list Some final thoughts on the Duomo of San Martino. It's actually a very stunning cathedral. Absolutely stunning. We've seen a lot of churches, a lot of cathedrals at this point, and this is like now in my probably like my top five, top ten. That's a fair assumption. Yeah, the ceiling is just breathtaking. Like I was literally speechless when we walked in. Absolutely amazing. I know we didn't get to see Volto Santo, but I'm sure it's going to look absolutely stunning when it is finished. Yeah, I mean, they did show, I like that they put a screen outside the little like restoration area. Um, the curtains only open when they're not restoring it. They have it on display, but right now they're working on it. So that's why the curtains close, but they have that little screen. It's much bigger than I actually thought it would be when we are sitting there watching it, um, watching the pictures. So unfortunately we can't see that, but hopefully it won't be too long. Yeah, maybe next time we're here, it won't be too long until it's back on display. Now that we've finished inside the cathedral, we're off to go find a little chickpea pizza from what i understand so we're gonna go to a place called pizza da felice apparently what? it's really good comes highly recommended even by locals so we're really excited to try it also it's like 4 30 and we've only eaten coffee <laughs> and about a raisin what is it the bu bucato bucello i'm so tired and hungry right now i forgot <laughs> how to say it Bucal, buca. but you made me forget buca as well oh my goodness <laughs> Oh. Okay. See, this is how hungry we are. We haven't eaten all day other than that. And we had a banana before we left the house. So it is time to eat because I think we're, we're definitely over 5Ks today walking so far. We need to refuel. There was siesta. We wanted to eat earlier, but it's uh, they were closed from 3 to 4. So now, now we're going. Not going to lie, Luca isn't the most navigational city. The streets do not go in line with each other. Everything just kind of wands you get lost pretty easily how giant are these trains you got to be careful not to drop your stuff down there it's a very cute i know this is a really cute street it's very aesthetically pleasing i don't know this is the prettiest street we've come across so far what is it chiasso barletti i think it's even got its own little thing huh oh okay <laughs> We made it. Ciao, come stai? Cerchiamo per la cecina. That's That's big. Oh my goodness. Quante pezzo di Okay, that's a huge ah, pizza. Okay. Uno di questo anche una pizza margarita. Meglio con vabbè. Oh, perfect. Okay. Should be good. I'm gonna put the table outside. Oh. Perfect. That looks so refreshing, it's not even funny. I am starving. 
right now. It's quite funny how we didn't actually know what we ordered. I know. In Italy, things can be a little bit confusing. This place seems to do things by the slice. Yeah, I thought we were going to get a whole one, but then when she took out the whole one of this, I was like, that's massive. That could feed a how family. How do you think they made the pizza? Yes, yes, she's in margarita. It comes out the oven. <laughs> And then this is a piece of the chichi, how do you say it? Chichina. Chichina, which is the chickpea flour pizza that uh, it's famous, known in Luca. Get a little bit of heat on there. Oh. Thank you. Service here is great. So we're going to get to that in a second, but I really want to try this chichina. Chichina. Chichina, I'm so hungry, I can't remember what you're saying. Mm. That is fresh. That is so refreshing. Okay, this bad boy just came fresh out the oven the second we got in there. So it's still, oh, yeah, that is hot. It's crazy. It just looks like literally the dough of a pizza, but this is all chickpea. Chickpea flour. No wasting time. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. -mm. <laughs> That's really good. It tastes... It tastes similar to the panelle that we got in Palermo. So the panelle in Sicily are chickpea fritters. This is like, it's so thin. It's basically just like a chickpea flatbread. But I actually think I prefer this because this is like super crispy and crunchy. It's really thin. Mmm, should put a splash of like a sprinkle of pepper on there too. That tastes delicious. Wow, that's so good. It's got such a good crunch to it. I actually prefer this one. It's literally just like a pizza slice. If they ask you if you want it with pepper, I think she said, she said it tastes better with the pepper, and I agree. This tastes really nice with the pepper. Mmm. That is good. This thing is huge. How did you even hold it? Like a... Oh, I think yours is bigger than mine. Here oh. we go. Oh, that crunch. That is so weird. I know I said a lot about food, because they're all different. Oh, that has such a unique taste though, eh? It looks so big when you hold it. It literally tastes like two ingredients. Three. A little bit of oil, chickpea flour, and pepper. I don't know, it doesn't taste... It does taste like the panela. A little bit. But yeah, this one is a lot thinner, a lot more crispy. Pretty delicious. I don't think this is a whole meal, but I'll definitely order it as a snack again. Your piece is massive. That is good. It's similar to like a pizza dough texture, but not. Apparently the margarita pizza here is also delicious. So I'm pretty excited about this one too, because Matteo and I will get, oh, look, we got a little, they also waited this. A little piccolino. <laughs> <laughs> this is the appetizer to the rest of the piece. Oh, <laughs> that is good. This place is, this place is worth the hype. It's a little bit oilier than I'm used to, but that is a nice, thin, crispy pizza. That base is solid. So if you've eaten a lot of pizzas in Italy, you know that a lot of times when you pick up the piece, it kind of gets like droopy, like kind of, and the, the ingredients on top can get almost quite soupy in a way. Like they're still, they're kind of heavy, but this is like a very firm slice. It's crispy. I love crispy pizza. I way prefer a crispy, thin base. That's like, ah, oh, it's beautiful to bite into. It's like so golden. So this to me is a winner for sure. That was so sweet of her. So the, the lady came out with two fresh hot pieces of the margarita pizza because we got the, the chickpea one fresh out the oven, but the margarita had, I guess, been out for like a second and she got like worried. So she just, they just made a new fresh hot margarita pizza and she just brought us two new slices. She's like, I'm so sorry. The other one's cold. Take these hot ones. We said, no, no, it's fine. But she insisted. So it was really kind of her. And she said, eat it quick. So here we, oh yeah. Okay, yeah, I can see the difference now between the, the cooler one and this one. This is like, oh, beautiful. Mm, okay, that hit different. That hit different. I thought the cold one was really good, but hot, hot, that just completely changed the game. So when you get it, make sure you get it hot, hot. I'll second that. That's gooey and delicious. But I'm gonna eat all of it. <laughs> Gotta put the camera down so we can eat it quick. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, that is Yo, that's hot. delicious. I'm pretty sure it's about one euro fifty a slice for each thing. So if you're wanting a snack and you're passing through, 
definitely come and eat this. Pizza da Felice. For 10 euro, we got the beer, the big, the big beer, two pieces of the chickpea one, and two slices of margarita for 10 bucks. Not bad. Absolutely delicious. <laughs> it's so funny how I thought coming here in the fall would mean I'm safe from mosquitoes, but I'm literally getting chowed right now. I'm like, why is my leg so itchy? Come on. Did you get any? My legs are beautiful. You do have beautiful legs, actually. <laughs> I love your legs. <laughs> I should have brought mosquito spray. Grazie. Grazie. È buonissimo. Grazie. Il più migliore gelato vicino qui. This place is the best. They're so sweet. Shouldn't even charge us for those two. We went, we went inside to offer to pay for the two uh, extra warm slices that she gave us, and they wouldn't take the money. They said, no, it's on the house. It was very kind of them. And then we got a and gelato then, recommendation. And then, uh, yeah, we're, so we're going to get some gelato before going back to refresh for dinner. So he asked her what the best gelato spot was. All right. Well, it's actually right next to our house. So. Perfect. What is it called? Gelateria Veneta. Veneta. So that was a recommendation. Yeah. So that's what's next. Four minute walk. It's in the amphitheater. This is square, more amphitheater. 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 <laughs> I really yeah. like this street. Silungo. There it is over there. There it is. Oh, here we go. Okay, so this was their recommendation. That looks gorgeous. What is that one in the back? Oh, that one's caramel. Tiramisu. Oh, fruta de tiramisu. That one looks delicious. It all looks so good. It's going to be really hard. I have no idea. Oh, we're going to have three. Okay. Okay. Meringata con pistacchio. What do you think? I'll have just two for now. Solo le due with Mr. Meridese. That looks amazing. E per me un cono piccolo, tiramisu de frutta, stracciatella per favore, anche, sì, tiramisu. Let's do it. Oh. Grazie mille. Oh, that looks so cute. <laughs> These are adorable. So it's 280 for the little cone. I'm so excited about this. I got normal tiramisu and then like this fruity tiramisu and stracciatella because I love stracciatella. What did you get? All right, so you can get three flavors of the small. However, I felt like maybe three might concoct a little bit weirdly, but I did get meringue, which is a new one I've never tried, and my standard pistachio. Pistachio. <laughs> so let's see how that is. It's literally meringue gelato. What I want to it's taste. Crunchy. <laughs> it's crunchy. It's crunchy. It's got pieces of meringue, chocolate pieces. That is absolutely delicious. Damn. Yo, you want to try it? Yeah, I want to try it. Let's come turn See, it around. without getting my ice cream on your thing. Which one is it? <laughs> oh my god. I think I just found my new favorite flavor. How did I not go for that? that? You're right, it's literally like they just it's turned right. a meringue into gelato and it's actually still crunchy. Yeah, it's That's delicious. crazy. It's, it tastes like you that, cr that crispiness when you bite into a meringue. That's exactly it. But very delightful. Wow. Oh, I'm so bummed I didn't get that. A pistachio. My ice cream smells like it. It's been too long. Too long since I last had my pistachio. Just absolutely delicious. And the gelato is more brown, using more natural nuts, less preservatives, less colorants. So these two are a winner. Okay. And while filming Matteo, mine was busy dripping on me because gelato melts really fast. I got the stracciatella because I love the stracciatella, which is like the, you know, it's got like little chocolate chunks in it, little chocolate pieces. It's very good, but this, this fruit tiramisu, I've never seen this flavor before. And it is so refreshing. There's like chunks of strawberry in here. Wait. Oh, <laughs> oh that, was, that is so good. Have you? <laughs> that is so refreshing. I'm still not a fan of fruit ice cream. Really? Mm -mm. Oh no, I think that's amazing. But Wait, so why did you get three now? I, I, then I got confused and for my third flavor, I just went with normal tiramisu. I haven't tried it yet though. 
fruit tiramisu. And this bottom one's a fruit tiramisu. The top one's a normal tiramisu. How's that taste of tiramisu? Oh, yeah, and they even like put that wet like was it lady finger in there? <laughs> yeah. What do you it's think so they funny. call that in Italian? These literally taste like the exact dessert. They just somehow managed mm -hmm. to just mush it down into gelato. But the textures are actually still there, like as if you're eating the dessert. A lady at Pizza da Felice nailed it. Mm. This is definitely worth the spot to come and visit. Come get ice cream, gelato. All my ice, all my flavors are all my flavors are, are melting together now. Don't get it on your shirt. Mm. I think I think your meringue is my favorite flavor now. Your meringue. Other than frigidarium, frigidarium flavor. I think that's my new favorite ice cream, uh, gelato flavor. There's three too many flavors to add mm -hmm. to ice cream. Maybe you check. Them. Stick with two because now they're all starting to mush together. The gelato melts so fast, not even funny. So they're just running down the cone now. This is why I always get a cup. I don't know why I get a cone today. I did it because Look around, Brad Spock. In a circle. You don't look, you know, don't look up and down. A circle. Like this. Uh. No, twist it when you're doing it. I'm trying, but it's slipping. Oh my god, that's why I always get a cup. Mine is a neat once. Now it starts to become a concoction of flavors. It's a little confusing. Man, oh, I want to get the meringue one now. But I do love these flavors. That is good. Oh, hey. If we look closely on our microphone, we can still spot pieces that Michelle left from about two years ago after she went too close to what? the cone and just dabbed it in. Well, my fault. Oh, look at this. This is why I hate eating in public and I hate getting cones. All right, I have a surprise for you, Monsieur. What is it? I mean, here's another napkin for you since you're like a toddler. I know. Why didn't you bring me any? Any? Thank you. On the final leg of this day tour, mm -hmm. we are now going to be walking through Piazza Anfiteatro, which is the ancient Roman amphitheater. It's right here. Right yeah. up the road. We live here. So it's like golden hour right now in the piazza. People are starting to come out, but we're just gonna go up to our apartment. I love that we're staying in an apartment that overlooks this place because it's just absolutely lovely. So we're gonna go chill for a bit and get ready for dinner in a couple hours. Yay. And now we get to enjoy the piazza from the privacy of our apartment. Beautiful. Now we're gonna chill, pour ourselves a glass of wine, listen to some music, and enjoy the atmosphere. This is the best view in the house. Cheers. <laughs>